I just made your old clothes here to the ending of our Savannah tour. I just want to say I'm back. I've been sick for a while, a few days, and I am now obviously feeling better. And with, without further new and further introduction, let's continue our Savannah tour. Savannah has seen quite a few wars. The Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the Civil War, and countless battles with the indigenous tribes that have left the city helped with blood. Luckily for us, Savannah was built in, built in a well-defended harbor nestled in the Savannah River and surrounded by later invested swamps. The old Fort Jackson was built as an extra measure to defend the city from the naval attacks. The fort did its job, seeing numerous battles but only fallen ones, when the Federal Sherman captured the Vienna toward the end of the Civil War. Today, Fort James Jackson hasn't seen battle in over 150 years, and now serves as his and now it serves as a history museum. The spirits of the soldier, soldiers garrisoned in, in the fort lives on. One soldier in particular, in particular still haunts Fort Jackson. No, that would be Private Garrity. The Blunson, who Blunson one of his superiors in the attempt of murder. Then drowned when he tried to escape. Well, while he may sound like a clumsy guy, Mary T's ghost is not is not to be underestimated. He's frightened towards and staff alike, often appearing at the site of the attempted murder or walking the halls from the fort. He wears a rebel coat and his apparition is only visible from the waist up. Tourists have reported seeing other soldiers around the fort, seemingly remaining at their posts after death. Before Fort Jackson was built, another British battle was done at the site. In 1808, Thomas Jefferson commissioned the construction of a fort at the site. They needed to defend Savannah from the possibility of another British attack. Or even the French, as up opportunists as they were, for the for the fort was named after James Jackson, a British born pro American politician. Jackson fought for the Americans in the revolution in the revolution, then later served as a Georgia State Senator and went on to become the twenty third governor of Georgia. Jackson died just a few years before construction began. Construction began at, the, at his namesake fort. Construction was completed in 1812, just as another war broke out. President Ma Madison was pressured to declare war while the British co continuously stopped and seized Amer American ships in the open ocean. Fort Jackson held both American soldiers and local mili military their military military during the war. Though the war resulted in a draw, the soldiers stationed at the fort successfully defended Savannah from the British in, in person. Old Fort Jackson success Old Fort Jackson was more saw more action in the Civil War as one of the three fort chains within defending Savannah. Fort Pulaski and Fort McAllister all formed a marine time perimeter around the mouth of the Savannah River. The fort held up for most of the war, deterring naval attacks even as it took heavy fire. In 1862, Fort Jackson took fire from a Union ship commander by escaped slave Robert Smalls who sold the Confederate ship and sailed into the Union hands. While Old Fort Jackson held up well against marine time attacks, the Banks Army proved too much to, too much to defend, defend against. 
General Sherman began his Spain March to the Sea in November of 1864. After capturing Atlanta, Sherman then begins his march towards towards the coast. The general followed Schwartz's Earth policy, where anything even remotely useful to the enemies was to be destroyed. They burned bridges and destroyed excess stockpiles of food and ammo along the way. Herman's army also liberated ten, tens of thousands of slaves who trailed him behind his march. Herman betrayed. Herman's men betrayed the green flames in the massacre when they tried to cross Ebenezer Creek. In December of 1864, just one month after taking Atlanta, General Sherman and his army arrived at the coast before entering Savannah. The troops surrounded and blocked the city, forcing the mayor, the mayor to surrender. The first order of affairs was capturing Fort Jackson. The Confederate soldiers stationed at the fort were forced to flee, leaving Fort Jackson abandoned. The Confederates fled across the river to South Carolina, South Carolina where they regrouped. A few months later, General Sherman marched up to the Carolinas and forced the Confederates to surrender once again. After the Civil War, the fort was rarely used. The name was changed to Fort August Fort in 1884, but it, in, but it was reverted in 1905 when the fort was missing. The city of Savannah brought old Fort Jackson in 1924, but the plans to turn the fort into a public park. But the fort had unused until the restoration in the 1970s. Today, the fort is a museum and open to the public. They conduct Civil War reenactments and daily cannon demonstrations in the summer. Old Fort Jackson was declared a historic landmark in the year in the 2000s, or in the year 2000. Just before General Sherman captured fort, the fort during the Civil War, as, as an unusual incident took place at Old Fort Jackson, a new recruit named Private Patrick Merrickey was charged with guarding the drawbridge. He had a deep hatred for his superior, Lieutenant George Dickerson. Nobody knows why he hated the lieutenant so much. But they speculate that Dickinson was an anti-Irish and anti-Catholic and mistreated Eric P. and his peers. One night, when Lieutenant Dickerson was returning to the fort, the private seized the moment, vowing for, vowing for vengeance. Merriton snuck up behind the lieutenant and smashed him on the head with a musket breaking Dickerson's skull in four places. Dickerson hit the ground, and Arrington kept gashing his head until he broke his musket. When nearby soldiers caught wind of the attack, Arrington dropped his gun and took off towards Savannah River. Attem attempting to escape, Arrington was too tired to swim and was overtaken by the strong current. He drowned trying to flee. Dickerson survived the attack. He woke up moments later, unable to remember what happened. The lieutenant's injuries forced him to step down from his post. Private Guarantee's ghost still roams old Fort Saxon. He often appears in the same spot where he attacked the lieutenant. He is recognizable by his Confederate ulterior. After, at first glance, one can be easily fooled into thinking Guarantee's ghost is actually part of the reenactment crew, but the ghost is only visible from the waist up. Hardly knows who encountered him. The reenactment crew had an, an annual award for the best actor, and it's called the Guarantee Award. It's shaped like the musket Guarantee used to kill the person. Every year, something strange seems to happen at the award. 
Ginny of Warren it either goes missing or mysteriously ends up broken. Thank mm -hmm. you.